Hey guys, I am Amit Kumar and welcome to this video in which we are going to talk about WHERE clause. In this video, we will see what is a WHERE clause, how we can filter records with the help of WHERE clause, what is the syntax of using a WHERE clause, what are the various operators that we use with WHERE clause and how to use these operators with different types of fields. Also, we will talk about the point of caution when we are using these operators with some specific type. So without wasting any time further, let's proceed with today's video. Where clause is also called a conditional expression. It is used to filter data. It is used to filter data to be retrieved. The syntax of where clause of SQL is select space, the fields that you want, space, from, space, name of the object from which you want those fields, space, where, space, the condition. Now we have already seen the SQL query in which we have used the syntax up to the object name. Now whatsoever condition that we want to specify to filter the records coming from the object, we specify that after the WHERE statement. Now this WHERE clause filters the data based on the given condition or criteria. For example, if I want ID name and type field from the account object where the type is prospect, so the query would look something like this. Hence, this specific SQL query will return all the account records where the value of the type field is prospect. Conditions can be provided with a relational or comparison operator. The relational or comparison operators that you can use over here are greater than, greater than equal to, less than, less than equal to, equal to and not equal to. So it's pretty much of talk and now it's time to see the things practically. And guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you want to stay updated with proper Salesforce tutorials and want to watch more tutorials, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. Also, if you have thoughts or question, drop it in the comments. I would love to hear from you and promise I will read every single one. Thank you so much guys. And now you can proceed with the video. Hey guys, welcome to the practical session of the WHERE clause. So in today's session, we will see how we can implement the WHERE clause in a normal SQL query. For that, let's open the developer console. Now, for example, if we are going to write a SQL query on a custom object, similarly, we can do that. So let's see. So I can see I have a classroom and a student object over here. So if I want to perform a SQL query on these objects, I can certainly do that. So let's perform some SQL query on the student. So there are few fields over here in the student, like student name, date of birth, and a master detail relationship column as well on the classroom object. So we will just see the name, date of birth, and student name of students. So to write down that query, in the query editor, we will type in select name, student name. Make sure we will use the underscore underscore C, that is the API name of the field, and date of birth from student object. Because it's a custom object, its API name will also have underscore underscore C and to execute this we can click on execute. Now today we will see how we can apply a WHERE clause in this specific query. So to apply a WHERE clause after writing down the name of the object we will write down WHERE and then after we can mention the name of the field on which we want to put the criteria. So basically WHERE clause is used to filter the records getting from the query. So suppose if I want to get the record where student name is Rahul Shivastav, so I will simply write down where student name is equal to and because it's a text field, I will write down Rahul Shivastav in single quotes. All the number fields or currency fields, when we write down those fields, we write down without single quotes. But if we are writing down with any type of text fields, we use the value in single quotes. Now when I will execute this query, it will not return me four records. Instead of that, it will return me only one record. So let me just execute this. And here you can see, now it filtered down all the records to just one single value. Now it's up to us what we are writing down after the WHERE clause. That means according to which field we are filtering the records. And to provide the value, we can use any of the conditional operator. It can be equal to, it can be not equal to, it can be less than greater than, less than, equal to or not equal to. For example, for the same query, if I write down here not equal to, which I can write down with a exclamation equal to or the other way to write down not equals to is to use less than and greater than together. So the they both represents not equal to. So let me just use it and execute. 
Now it will return me all the records where student name is not equal to Rahul Srivastava. So hence I got the rest of the three records. If I close this tab and I change this not equal to operator with less than and greater than, that will also represent not equal to. Let me execute and you get the same result. Now we can certainly use greater than, less than, greater than equals to and less than equals to value as well. Now these values are basically used with numeric type of fields. Now to show you some result with that, let me try to perform the query on some other object. For example, let's work on account. Now you can see these annual revenues are there. There are some records which do not have annual revenue as well. Now let's suppose if I'm performing normal so-called query, I will get these 13 records. But I want only those records where annual revenue is not blank. So to write down that query, I will write down select, let's suppose name, type, annual revenue from account. If I write down only this much and execute, you will find all the 13 records. And here you can see, you are also getting records where annual revenue is blank. So if I modify this query with a where clause and I simply write down here where annual revenue is not equals to, let me provide a blank value over here. See what happens here. If I provide blank value inside single quotes, what will happen? So if I execute, it will give me an error. As I told you, these single quotes are used with text fields, but annual revenue is a currency type of field. So we cannot use that. We can write down null over here. So what I mean to say is where annual revenue is not equal to null, in other terms, where annual revenue is not blank. So let me execute this. And now you see, you get only eight records now. And all these eight records are not having annual revenue as blank. Now let's suppose if I want to see the records where annual revenue is greater than this value. So I can use a greater than symbol here where annual revenue is greater than and this specific value and execute. So there are only three records where annual revenue is greater than this specific value. Now greater than less than symbol can also be used with string but they generally are not used with string. But it is not like we cannot use it in a so-called query. You can use them in so-called query as well. Now let's suppose these are the various uh, account types customer channel, customer direct. There are only basically two account types that are being selected here, customer channel and customer direct. And there are two more records where they are blank. So let me try to fill these values with some other values if it is there. So here I am modifying this sample account for entitlements and changing the type to channel partner or let it be installation partner. To S force, I am changing it to technology partner. So these two were blank, now I'm saving it. So now all the records are having value. Let me perform the so-called query one more time. So if you are executing the same query and want to refresh the value, there is one more option to do that, that is refresh grid. If you will click on refresh grid, the same so-called query will be executed and it will fetch the fresh value from there. Now here I'm providing the condition where type is greater than, let's suppose customer, and then, try, then I'm trying to execute. So all the values are coming here, right? Now let me try to use type is greater than customer channel and now let me execute so here you see customer all the records where the type was customer channel is not returning now what do we mean when we say type is greater than customer channel when we are performing greater than or less than condition with string it actually treats strings in alphabetical order now customer direct is greater than customer channel because channel is starting with c and direct is starting with d so definitely customer direct is greater than customer channel itself. Why technology partner? Because T is greater than C. Similarly, I is greater than C. So it's just like the same alphabetical order which is followed in dictionary, right? So when you will use greater than and less than symbol with text, make sure that it will treat the text in alphabetical order and accordingly it will treat them as greater than or less than. If I use installation partner, greater than installation partner over here and execute this, then only one value will come because only T is greater than I, right? All are less than I. That's the reason. Now, certainly you can perform this so-called query and you can write it down in Apex as well. So let me just show you that as well. I will go to anonymous window and here I will write down the whole query inside square bracket. Now the result of this whole query will be a list of student, right? So let me note down as a list of student and then I will create that list name as well. Now to increase the readability, you can change the line as well. That is completely all right. Like from from, I am changing the line. 
So this is your whole query which is going to return you a list of student. Now I can certainly iterate over this list and if I want I can print the individual field values as well. So student dot name, student dot student name and the name field is the record name of the record and the last one is date of birth and then after I can add a separator because I'm going to get more than one value. Let me click on execute and here you go. You can see individual field values are printed over there for each record. Now sometimes we are sure that our query is going to return us only a single value. For example, suppose if I'm querying according to the ID. Now the record ID of each record is unique. So if I'm querying according to the ID, definitely I'm going to get only a single value over here. That's for sure, right? So I can provide an ID over here. So let me take the ID from the org. Let's go to students, open any specific student and copy the record ID from here and paste it here. Now definitely the result is going to be only one record, but still I can hold it in a list of it. And this list will have only one record, hence the loop will run only for one time. So if I will execute this, you can see the loop is executing only one time because there is only one record with that specific record ID. Now. Specifically in such scenario, when you are aware and when you are sure that this specific so-called query is going to return you only one record, then you need not to hold it in a list of it. You can create it in a singleton object. That means instead of creating a list of student, I will create a student object directly. And of course, in such scenario, I don't need a loop. So this whole thing, I can keep it without any loop and it will work perfectly. So let me execute this. And here you go. But in such scenario, when you are writing down a query and holding it in a singleton object, you should be sure that this query is returning one record. For example, if I'm performing on name also, this will work. So let me run on student name and I'm passing this student name, which is Ajay Chaudhary. So I'm just passing this name itself over here. And the same query will work now if I will execute. But the catch is suppose if I pass a value, in the where clause and there is no specific record with that specific value then this singleton object will throw an exception okay let me show you that suppose i type in amit kumar over here and execute you can see an exception is thrown line number one is throwing an exception that list has no rows for assignment to object and the reason is this list has no rows to assign to this specific object so when you are using a singleton object definitely you should be sure that this so-called query is definitely going to return a record. Otherwise, you will end up with an exception. Now, if I would have created a list over here and let me just comment out the rest of it. And in this case, if I will execute, it won't throw any exception because in that case, this list will end up with a blank list. So let me just show you this list itself. So let me just system.debug show you the list. So let it be students. And let me show you the size of this list as well. The students dot size and execute. Here you go. Size is zero and list is empty. So list is a very safe way for querying record. But in case if you are sure, you can certainly go with singleton object. But you have to be sure that this is going to return me a record. Now that marks the end of this video. See you soon in the next video. Till then, thank you and take care.